Welcome back to the Oakland Athletics franchise. As today it was June 5th, and that means draft day. We had the sixth worst, rec worst record in the MLB last year, which means we will have the first overall, or we'll have the sixth overall pick. And we selected catcher Jarrett Baldwin. We thought he would be a nice addition to our team. We don't really have a young catcher, so that's definitely a good addition. You could say Sean Murphy, but he's 28, so I'm not sure how young he really is. With our second round pick, we selected Julio Vila. He was a pretty good third baseman. And I don't think Longoria or Chapman are really going to be our long-term third baseman unless Chapman gets a lot better. With our, competi with our competitive balance round pick, we ended up selecting Andres Carrasco, a guy that I think is going to be a nice addition to our team and who's going to upgrade our starting rotation even more. We always have to draft a meme player. This year was Kenneth Obama. I thought that was just kind of a funny name. Last year we selected Bill Self, obviously. And then with the next pick, we would select Cedric Cannon, a nice third baseman who I think can also be good for maybe double-A... Midland, I think he could be a nice addition on that team. In their last selection of the draft, we selected Fernando Velasquez, a relief pitcher from high school. Overall, I think we had an extremely good draft, about five times better than last year. Jarrett Baldwin, the 98 potential. He's going to be a great player. Obviously, Julio Vila, 65 overall, 90 potential. Andres Carrasco, 90 potential, 63 overall. Kenneth Obama, 65 potential. As you can see, he kind of looks like I don't, I don't even know. He's definitely not looking like Barack Obama. He looks like a Kenny Obama. But he's a 65 potential, which really isn't that bad for kind of just a joke pick. And he's a 65 overall as well. Brad Jefferson, a guy that actually didn't cover. He was a 47 overall, 79 potential. Cedric Cannon, 52 overall, 63 potential. And then Fernando Velasquez, 71 potential, 65 overall. We would end up signing every single player to a one-year deal worth around 60 or 70K which I think is pretty good. Andres Carrasco, very excited about him. And Jared Baldwin could be very good as well. We tried to effort, or we tried to offer Cedric Obama a little too little, and he declined that. So we ended up signing him to a higher contract. Looking at, we actually would sign the rest of, we actually signed every single draft pick because they're all very good. We had an extremely well draft, and I think Jared Baldwin will be the catcher of the future for our team. Moving ahead, I wanted to play one game against the Yankees. We were actually down, I think, 3-0 in the series, so we wanted to avoid the sweep. And we actually fell to second place in the AL West because of this 3-0 deficit in this series. We're just a game back of the Astros, but with a win, we could be just half game back. So we'll be taking on Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, and the Bronx Bombers this afternoon. On the hill for them, they just send out Joe Moe, Jordan Montgomery, and making his 13th start. He has a 5-4 record and a 4.31 ERA. Starting out, his first batter he faced would be Jorge Mateo. One, two, count to him. Here's the pitch from Joe Mo to Mateo. He fouls it off behind the plate. And then the repeated one, two pitch. Here it comes. He rips a little liner into right. That's why he's our leadoff hitter, because he can foul pitches off, take long at bats, and then get hits off of those just like that. A little later, the very next pitch. Mateo's off running. That's a called strike, but there is he not even a throw because of the great jump he got. A one pitch to Matt Duffy, a hard hit ground ball to the third baseman. Running back is Drury, and then making a throw right on the money to retire Duffy. A nice play there from Brandon Drury. Uh, moving ahead is Evan Longoria. First pitch to him. Here it comes from Jordan Montgomery. A liner into right field. Here comes Aaron Judge. He comes up firing. The throw home is... Right on the money! Mateo's out, and Longoria tried to advance to second. He's easily tagged out by the first baseman, and that's the end of the inning. Oh my, what an inning that was. Rick Porcello on the hill for us, a perfect 10-0 record. More than likely the AL Cy Young and the starter for the All-Star Game, making us their 13th start of the season. First batter he would face would be none other than Mr. Wade. He would go down swinging on a little curveball, that nasty pitch from Porcello. Then the full count pitch, the payoff pitch to Aaron Judge. Gets him going on the basketball. He sits down on strikes. Move went ahead in the afternoon. Porcello's still on the hill. And so is Montgomery. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Chris Davis. He swings and misses on a pitch in the dirt. Sanchez recovers, fires on the first, and Davis is out. A little later, Monca er, Porcello on the hill, actually. Here's the 1-2 pitch to Giancarlo Stanton. He has all that power. He gives him the pitch he wanted, but he swings and the misses. Porcello overpowers him. The full count pitch to Neil Walker. He goes down looking on the fastball. Runs him inside for strike three. And the 0-2 pitch here comes from Porcello. Gets a weak ground ball up the middle and it misses. Oh my, the new hitter's broken up in the bottom of the third. Because Jorge Polanco, I guess, forgot how to field a ground ball. And then the first pitch is going to be a little deep fly ball. It's safe right field going back to Scotty. Then he makes the catch of the wall about as far as a ball you can hit without it being a home run. Piscotti runs back and makes the catch. 
and Sportsello relieves some or has a sigh of relief. The 1 1 pitch to Chris Davis here in the top of the fourth. There's a little liner into the right center gap, and he got right into the shift. And actually, out of the shift as they were shifted towards the left side of the field, and that's a double for Chris Davis. After an out from Jorge Polanco, that would bring up. Actually, Jorge Polanco is up here. Here is the 0 2 pitch to him. Takes a fastball right down the chute, and then is arguing about it. Not really sure what he wanted right there. First pitch to Steven Piscotti's a liner in the exact same spot as Davis's. This one's going down for an RBI double from Steven Piscotti as he's going to get extra bases on it. And that's an RBI double for him. What a hit right there from Steven Piscotti. And the A's go up 1-0. Pot bottom of the fourth. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Brandon Bell. He goes down on strikes. Yet another strikeout victim from Porcello. 2-0 pitch to John Carlos Stanton. He rips one into the gap. Piscotti misjudges it. This one will go to the wall. And that'll be an easy double for John Carlos Stan as he gets the double with two down. The very next batter he would face would be Mr. Sanchez as Gary Sanchez whips him to the wall. This one's going back, but Mateo would have the speed to catch it and end the inning as Porcello gets out of trouble and he allows no runs through four. Bottom of the fifth now, the one-two pitch to Adam Duvall in a little liner in the left. This one gets down for a hit. Back-to-back -back hits for the Bronx Bombers, and now they have runners on first and second with just one now. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Rick Porcello. Get some going on the curve. Oh, my, what a pitch right there from Big Rick as he gets out of the fifth inning. Bottom of the eighth we go. A's still up 1-0. to zero. Here's the first pitch from Dylan Batances to Matt Olsen. It's a hard to grab ball. It gets through through the glove of Brandon Drury, and that's a hit for Matt Olsen. A little later, here's the 1-0 pitch to JT Romuto. Rips the inside curveball into right center field. Rounding second and 80 to third will be Olsen. The throw third is not in time. Olsen is safe as it is offline. And there's runners on the quarters now with one down. After, actually with no down. Then with a 1-2 pitch to Mateo, he rips it into left field for a single, an RBI single. And the A's go up 2 to nothing in this one. Mateo slides back to first safely. And then... The very next pitch, off and running, there's Mateo as he swipes second base with the end another steal in the afternoon. The one pitch to Evan Longoria, here it comes, he's going to rip a deep five ball into center field, going back and making a catch, and the Yankees get out of trouble in the top of the eighth, but not before allowing a run as the A's go up 2-0. One two pitch in the bottom of the ninth. Here to Aaron Judge. It's a weak ground ball over the right side. Going over is Porcello to throw out a first is safe. Not in time. Judge tied him. And that's gonna be a base hit, but really was a mental error on Porcello. Very next batter. Stanton sends one date. This one could have been a double play to end the game, but it's a two-run home run to extend the game. Porcello's 100th pitch of the afternoon is a two-run blast from Stanton. His shutout is broken up here in the bottom of the ninth by a John Carlos Stanton, formerly known as Michael Stanton, Stanton home run, which ties the game at two apiece as the crowd was absolutely going crazy. No offense throughout the entire game except for the bottom of the ninth as they hit a two-run blast and is now tied up at two apiece. Then the 1-2 pitch, the 108th pitch of the night from Porcello to Sanchez. Get her to go down looking on the strikeout. Move to the bottom of the 11th. Porcello still on the hill. The 132 pitch of the night is a strikeout looking on Brandon Belt, and that would be his last pitch of the night as Nate Jones would come in for the A's in the bottom of the 11th to relieve. He would go until the bottom of the 13th, and boy, was he dominant this afternoon. First battery to face would be Aaron Judge, 1-2 to him. Gets him going on the slider. Judge morally upset with himself, as you can see. Here's Porcello's resume of the day. 10 and a third, 7 hits, 2 runs. 2 earned runs, no walks, 14 strikeouts, and 132 pitches thrown. Then the 0-2 pitch to Stanton. Gets him going on that slider. That's a nasty strikeout pitch from Nate Jones. Going to the top of the 14th, a roll this Chapman comes onto the hill. He choked in Game 7 of the World Series in 2016. What he choke here in the clutch time? First batter he would face would be Jorge Mateo. Here's the very first pitch from Chapman to Mateo. Deep fly ball, deep left field to a bat flip fella. Touch on my Jorge Mateo as the A's go up 3-2. to two. A crazy solo blast from the one, the only, Jorge Mateo. Sayo, this one's out of here, and Chapman is rattled as the A's go up 3-2 in the top of the 14th. 
Who would have believed it? AJ Hinch off of his seat in disbelief. The little man with no power hits a home run in the top of the 14th when it matters the most. And only his third home run of the season. And we'd send it out to the bottom of the 14th. Liam Hendricks, I were closer on the hill for the Athletics as you see this home run one more time. Hendricks making his 20th appearance of the year. Comes in with 16 saves and a 1.45 ERA. Moving ahead here for the A's. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Brandon Belt from Hendricks. Get some looking on that outside slider. Are you swinging? No, I'm just looking. That's a strikeout. A 2-2 pitch to Aaron Judge from Hendricks. Get some chase in the slider. That's a second out of the inning. Can he strike out the side? John Carlos Stanton, the 0-2 to him for the ball game. Get some going on the curve. Hendricks gets the save, and the Athletics win this one in the bottom of the 14th by a final score of 3-2 as they steal the sweep from Yankee Stadium as they are going to be tired after this one. What a performance by Rick Porcello. His only mistake was giving up a bad fielding play and then a two-run home run to Stanton. Other than that, he threw an absolutely phenomenal game, striking out 14 batters. An absolutely crazy game. Jordan Montgomery didn't do too bad himself except for the little bit of offense that the A's could have. Jorge Mateo, player of the game, 3-for-5, a home run, two RBIs, and a run himself, as the Athletics are still in second place of that AL West, but they're first in the wild card. Our prospect profile today would go over Greg Deichman, the 17th overall player in our entire organization. He currently plays for the Nashville Sounds, and he's a pretty good overall player. As you can see, they're taking on the Las Vegas 51s today, and Greg Deichman, a very good route fielder. He could be a right fielder, in the starting rotation in the starting lineup if we do see him progress better than he is right now. He's a right he's a right fielder, left-handed batter, right-handed thrower. He stands at six foot two, 190 pounds, and he was signed in the athletics back in June of 2017. I'm not exactly sure how they signed him, but they just picked him up on a deal. And then he's got some power as he rips this one out of the park. This was probably his best game that he's had in about three weeks. He was on a kind of a slump, but he broke out of the slump here tonight as Nashville takes a 3-0 lead off of the Deichman home run. What a shot that was, as I think he could progress into a very good player. He does have some nice power, and he's a very durable player. He can definitely last an entire MLB season. I don't think that's his issue. I think his issue right now is he's just not exactly at the skill level that we want him to be. I think this offseason for Deichman will definitely decide his career. If he's good enough to be on the MLB roster come springtime, he will be. If he's not, then he won't be. He's got a very good arm in right field. As you can see, a perfect throw home. Ends up not even needing to throw it as nobody goes home, but still testing out his arm right there. Bottom, they're top of the sixth. Nashville sounds up 4-1. He rips a hard ground ball up the middle for a base knock. As you can see, a hit right there. Currently in AAA, he's hitting 296 with 7 home runs and 25 RBIs. He has good power and good plate vision. He's not very clutch. It's probably one of his downfalls. My prediction for him is a 270 average with 10 to 15 home runs, 40 RBIs. And a good comparison to him would be the Cubs' right fielder, Jason Hayward. That big, lengthy build. And he rips one tape here on the top of the 8th, sending this one out of the park. What a shot right there. Second home run in the game. Can you guys believe that? But basically his best game probably of his entire career so far with two home runs and we were just lucky enough to catch it here in Las Vegas. So like I said, he's definitely going to be a good player in our organization if he can just keep progressing. And that'll wrap up the video for today of the Oakland Athletics franchise. If you guys enjoyed, please drop a like on it and subscribe if you guys are new. The next video for me will probably come out tomorrow because I'm uploading every single day this summer. I made a promise to you guys and I'm going to keep that promise. The videos that I'm going to plan on going is obviously the same schedule that I've been going on. And then probably a setup tour tomorrow. Maybe uh, Titans after that. And then probably I'll do another mock draft. I'll probably do a Fortnite video at some point. So yeah, stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.